Nightly greetings one and all. William Theo here, homegrown and happy to bring you PTV News Now. They came with their families and loved ones to see their commander-in-chief elevate them to a higher rank and a new star across their nameplates and epaulets. The 40 newly minted and higher ranked generals of the country's armed forces, the latest twinkler to their names, the culmination of hard work, exemplary leadership in putting the AFP moving forward among the select few of the most professional organizations in government. In his speech, the commander-in-chief extolled the professionalism and virtues of his new set of higher ranked generals and cited their new challenge as radiated from within to threats to national from outside. He pointed out how he, the bureaucracy, and the public from here on will expect more from his new generals and officers in setting the lead as the guardians of a growing democracy and flesh out the virtues of integrity, discipline, courage, and patriotism. The latest batch of newly promoted officers of the military consists of 14 brigadier and 10 major, also from the arm from the Philippine Navy, a lieutenant four major generals and four brigadier from the Air Force, one three-star general, two major generals, and three brigadier generals or commodores. He's the undisputed pioneer of low-budget independent movies who almost always got his pictures in the can on schedule. Roger Corman died in his Santa Monica home over the weekend at the age of 98. An icon of independent filmmaking who, monit who mentored and gave some of the biggest names in Hollywood their big breaks early in their careers, such as Francis Ford Coppola, Martin Scorsese, James Cameron, and Ron Howard. Likewise, he hired actors like A-lister Jack Nicholson, Robert De Niro, Peter Fonda and Ellen Verstein as they tried to make a name for themselves on the silver screen. Indeed, Corman had a remarkable eye for talent in his budding stages. As the king of cult and B-films, Corman once said he had made over a hundred movies and never lost a dime on any one of them. Meanwhile, wanting to seize on the moment and sway Jewish voters over the issue and conflate it with the universally despised rebel group of Hamas, Republicans hit on U.S. President Joe Biden's latest directive to withhold certain an offense trail to Mufa and plan to evacuate Palestinian civilians safely. VOA's Veronica Balderas Iglesias has more. It was a somber Sunday in Israel as it marked Memorial Day for its fallen soldiers and victims of terror. Across the border, displaced Palestinians heeded evacuation orders ahead of Israel's planned expansion of its military operations against Hamas in Rafah, the southern city in Gaza. What is happening on the other side of the world is also strongly resonating on the campaign trail in the United States. Republican presidential Trump. candidate Donald Trump brought up the Israel-Hamas war when addressing a crowd of almost 100,000 of his supporters Saturday in Wildwood, New Jersey. There would have been no war in Gaza with me in the White House. When I was president, we had peace in the Middle East like never before. Trump and other Republicans have strongly decried the Biden administration's recent decision to pause certain bomb shipments to Israel in the context of unfolding events in Rafah. Republican Senator Lindsey Graham framed his criticism Sunday in the context of World War II. So when we were faced with destruction as a nation after Pearl Harbor, fighting the Germans and the Japanese, we decided to end the war by bombing uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki with nuclear weapons. That was the right decision. Give Israel the bombs they need to end the war they can't afford to lose and work with them to minimize casualties. But even as some weapons shipments have been paused, a recent State Department report to Congress failed to conclude that Israel has violated U.S. and international law when using military assistance during its war against Hamas. Secretary of State Antony Blinken was asked on NBC whether the U.S. is avoiding holding its ally accountable. No. We don't have double standards. We treat uh, Israel, one of our closest allies and partners, just as we would treat any other country. 
And when we can reach definitive conclusions, we will. But it's very difficult to do that in the midst of a war. Progressive independent Senator Bernie Sanders, who aligns with Democratic opposition to Israel's conduct of the war, told NBC that in his view, Israel should not be receiving another nickel in U.S. military aid. 35,000 Palestinians dead and 77,000 wounded, two-thirds of whom are women and children. That is not the way you conduct a war in a civilized society to the degree that war is civilized. It is expected that Joe Biden, who has so far been able to strike a balance between his re-election bid and his official duties as president, will face new challenges this coming week by congressional Republicans over the pause of some military transfers to Israel. Donald Trump, meanwhile, will return to the courtroom on Monday and face his former fixer, Michael Cohen, as Cohen testifies in Trump's New York hush money trial. Veronica Valderas Iglesias, VOA News, Washington. Now let's turn to our colleague Ala Sugduan for the latest updates in the Cordilleras. Ala? Naimbag Arabi i Pilipinas, bimaba iti 45% di crime incidence di probinsya ti Kalinga iti umuna a quarter di 2024. Nakilista ti polisya ti 17 lying akaso dag iti focus crimes. Nabababa da ito, inuidilig iti 31 akaso iti kapata a quarter iti 2023. Nakilista ti 6 akaso ti rape, upat akaso ti murder, sagtalo akaso ti physical injury and theft, may sa iti kaso at theft. Napartangan nga mi, nag iti programa kang kampanyada at tapno mapagtalinaad, ti linak kang kapya iti kalinga. Tututukan da iti agdama, ti syudad ti tabuk, as sentro ti probinsya. Kagidan ti panagdugaw ni Police Colonel Lazona, binukal na ti Mobile Patrol Unit, kandi Traffic Unit, tapno masolusyonan nag iti nagduduma at krimen. Impanamnama nag iti Lumin Awa Cup, ti napintas may asabisyo da iti probinsya. There is a significant decrease regarding the crime rate because of the we there is a transition regarding the deployment of personnel. Kapiyata na mag-observaran tugal Mayo ti Safe Motherhood Week. May tunus iti tarigagay ti gobyerno a may payan nag iti amin a babae a Pilpino iti full access iti health services. Iti Cordillera 56.42 ti maternal mortality ratio. Ipakpakita da ito iti bilang da kiti ina iti riyon a pimusay ga po kada kiti komplikasyon a konektado iti panagsikog. As of 2023, pakabuklan a 14 maternal death tinilista iti Cordillera, lima iti Baguio City, talo iti Abra, sagdwa iti Ifugao, kan Kalinga, kan Sagaysa iti Apayaw, kan Benguet. Impotang da kiti health experts, anas kan amay tuloy da kiti kampanya tap no maksayan ti maternal mortality rates, kan may pasigurado ti access sa gati masikog iti natalgad kandi kalidad ang maternal health care services. Kasapulan pa ay aming ta ti reproductive health education kan mapanawa ti access sa gati adolescents iti contraceptive services tap nung maprobentaran ti nasapa at panagsikog kada gati ang tutubo a babae. It's to prevent any uh, problems that could have uh, uh, the mom or the baby and to make sure both healthy and uh, well taken care of. It involves the following getting regular checkups during pregnancy, uh, having a trained person help during childbirth and uh, getting the right uh, care after having a baby. Dagita, dagiti damdamag, manipod ito'y PTV Cordillera, shop ni Ana Sunduan, na imbag arabi. Thank you, Allah. This is William Theo for PTV News Now. Have a restful night ahead. <laughs>